Polluted Thoughts Podcast, Real Talk with Real People. I'm your host, Colin Gary. We're live. Uh, not live in a sense where it's a live stream, don't be concerned, but live in a sense where we are recording in the studio, um, Zoom studio, and we're here with one of my favorite people, someone who means so much to me, Johnny Drugan, the one and only. Uh, thank you for coming through, Johnny. What's up, Colin? I appreciate it. Oh, man. Good to see you, man. I'm glad to see you. That's what's going on. Happy to see your face on my it's screen. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure seeing you. I was happy to see you when I saw you just the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Always uh, good. I mean, you've known my family for what? Like, I mean, I don't want to date you here, but for like, what, like 25, 30 years now? Let me see here. Uh, we did this math a few weeks ago. Um, so... Yeah, about uh, uh, about 34, 35 years. Wow. Holy no, crap. Longer. Yeah, right around there, 34, 35 years. Sorry, that took me a second there. No, 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 you're good. I'd, I'd rather get the uh, the information. My, my math gets progressively worse as the day goes on. <laughs> um, And you met Uncle Brian first, right? My Uncle Brian? Yeah, indeed. We're the same was, age. That was just like grade and, school kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, I don't think in we, – we didn't meet in class. We, we met uh, – um, on the play fields, if you will. Um, but yeah, um, him and um, our friend TJ, um, who played drums and bands with me, and who you've probably heard stories about and seen pictures of. Yeah. Uh, he lives in uh, Louisiana now. Oh, okay. Um, still in touch with him. Um, He's still making then, music? Uh, I'm sorry? Is he still making music? Um, I, he works, um, musical things as a producer and engineer, I believe still, um, and definitely does like audio type stuff. I don't know if he's actually, um, making original music of his own right now. Um, good question. Um, I don't think he's currently playing in a band, but, um, I could be wrong. Um, uh, but and yeah, you uh, guys and our, and our mutual friend, uh, Jason Malik. We're, we're still in touch with a guitar with us and your uh, Uncle Brian. And, uh, yeah. Did you guys meet, and like, then, through music? Like, was that the connecting? No. Um, actually, uh, actually, I, uh, I'm a little bit foggy on this, but um, I think we were actually supposed to fight for some reason that I can't remember. <laughs> and uh, that fight never took place. And we wound up somehow becoming friends after that. And uh, we were kind of like um, acquaintances for a little while. And then uh, we both had to, to caddy at the country club um, okay. per our uh, parents' uh, insistence. And um, we'd play hooky from the caddy yard and like hang out um, and do uh, things that we weren't supposed to do. Uh, and kind of just uh, wound up uh, becoming fast friends. And then uh, that kind of uh, evolved into, see, at the time, your Uncle Brian was mainly listening to uh, hip hop and uh, wasn't really tuned into heavy metal um, or that type of stuff that we were listening to at the, at the time, hardcore. Um, uh, and uh, I hipped him to uh, some stuff, you know, that that was, I thought was important music at the time. And he gravitated towards it and really dug it and, uh, um, you know, wound up becoming a full-fledged uh, metalhead. Um <laughs> And I mean, we always appreciated other styles of music as well. We weren't like, we didn't only listen to heavy metal, but um, that was kind of his um, introduction to it. Um, and uh, we, that somehow progressed into us playing in a band with each other. Um, me, your uncle Brian, TJ, and Jason. Um, Jason lives in Florida now. Um, 
we he actually uh, came over not too long ago and we we got to visit and hang out came by with his with his wife and his two sons um he has a son that's your age um and then um uh, a younger son that's uh i think he's a uh, um uh sophomore in high school maybe um yeah super cool so yeah i was actually uh i was telling your your dad about that um recently and we're reminiscing we took got to take some pictures we went out there and stuff uh but yeah that's super cool i, I was gonna so, ask you do you think that the heavy metal and the hip-hop thing has to like do g like gi like like i don't even like just him being in the northeast and new england geographically speaking like not being able to get in tune with that kind of music and then the midwest being more like in tune with metal i don't, I don't know because uh when you got when you're get when your family moved away moved out back to massachusetts um i think we were uh juniors in high school at that time uh if i'm if memory serves me right and uh right when he went back when he went back he w immediately started sending us um killer east coast uh hardcore um yeah. sam black church this band psychosis um which i recently found a cassette that your uncle sent me um that's cool uh kill switch engage engage ends up kill switch engage are actually big sam black church fans there's like a it was like a little uh snippet of a documentary they were working at were not a couple of the guys from Kill Switch were talking about how much they loved Sam Black Church, and that was a huge thing for for us. Um, and it was cool for us in Chicago because we were like, "Listen to this awesome East Coast hardcore. It's so different than what you know than th a totally different sound than the bands that were playing here." Uh, we had our own awesome thing going too, but like there was this um, interesting like swing and time change that the Ecos bands were doing that was so cool um, and different and just hurt your ear up and uh, yeah um, so I don't think it was getting back to your question I don't think it was a thing where like you know there was more of a certain type here than there yeah. was where you guys were from because that's like awesome heavy hardcore stuff from your area was huge and like really influential on anyone who was into that style of music at the time. Yeah, that is really interesting. I actually, a uh, couple, I guess it was like a couple years ago, not two years ago, I saw a, um, on the day of, I happened to see that Slipknot was playing and me and my buddy went and got, went and saw them and Kill Switch Engage happened to open for them. And I remember telling Uncle Brian, he was all excited being like, that was one of the big bands, like back when he was younger for heavy metal. Great show. How old yeah. were you when you saw that? I was 19, maybe just turned 20. And I remember I listened to okay. uh, like so duality. Recently. Yeah. So yeah, it was like, it was recently, it was like two, two falls ago, I believe. Um, okay. Maybe three this upcoming year. But, uh, but yeah, I listened to like, got into Slipknot like for like a week and, and started listening to them. And then like on Spotify, it shows that they play concerts like nearby and I clicked on it and that happened like that day that they were playing in Mansfield mass, like an hour away. So me and my buddy went, it was a great yeah. show. Yeah. Right on. They're very cool. Very cool. Too. Yeah. Um, I remember when we went to come visit you, which was a great trip Um, that, Something got mentioned of your father playing bass for like Johnny Winter or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, um, when my dad was 12 years old, which would have been uh 1954, whoa, um, he, he moved from Chicago uh, to Beaumont, Texas, um, with his father, um, and they he through through music my uh my grandfather seymour drugan was a professional um uh, guitar player horn player violinist and several wow. other instruments but he played uh he was the um uh just to give a little backstory he was the band leader of the don mcneil 
uh, Breakfast Club, uh, which was a huge radio show. It was uh, on WGN. It was the WGN Breakfast Club with uh, Don McNeil. And uh, he that was like broadcast all over the United States. And um, he did that for years and was also on, on some other like big records of the time. He was endorsed by Gibson Guitars and uh, um, also by uh, Gretsch Guitars as well. Wow. And uh, uh, but so anyway, when he moved to to Beaumont, Texas, he was helping a, a friend get a music store open and started. And he uh, gave lessons there and and helped do things around the shop. And uh, my dad would go there to help out, you know, as well and hang out and do odd jobs there. And uh, Johnny Winter um, uh, went there for guitar lessons as a as a young man. And um, my grandfather wound up teaching him a whole bunch of stuff and um saw how great he was that he was you know a child prodigy uh guitar player and uh my he wound up you know saying hey you know my son dennis you know should maybe play some bass with you and uh if you're looking to do a band and they became good friends my dad and, and johnny and uh i went to high school together and um would hang out and go to uh, blues clubs that they weren't supposed to go to uh, uh, when they were teenagers. And um, uh, my dad was on uh, Johnny's first two records, um, you know, and they played on the radio. It was really cool. And then my dad uh, decided to move back to Chicago. Um, Johnny stayed in Texas, but then wound up coming back to Chicago and uh, lived with my dad for probably about a month. And wow. they played uh, clubs all up and down Rush Street at the time. Um, which was uh, a wild time in the early 60s um, in that Chicago area. A lot of the clubs and uh, bars were uh, mob run at the time. And Ooh. so um, there's kind of uh, a lot of shady activity going on. And yeah. um, I know they were, I know it was a lucrative time for bands because they it helped back a lot of people into all these clubs in that area and they'd get paid really well. Um, so, uh, wow. um, but yeah, so. Um, my dad, my dad remained friends with Johnny, um, his whole entire life, um, until Johnny passed, uh, several years back. Um, and, uh, my dad is still around and doing great. And, um, he's got a lot of great stories from those days and is still making more uh, to this day. He yeah, comes so to was... our uh, shop in the studio here, um, pretty much every day and hangs out and helps out around here. And, uh, He's a, a joy to be around and uh, everyone loves him. I think that that's where I kind of, we were kicking it like outside of the shop and your dad was just hanging with us. And I think that's where it might've slipped up. He might've like, uh, he might've dropped a little hint about something like that. And I remember, I think I followed up with you roughly about it, but I didn't know that your grandfather kind of mentored him. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's a strong um, ass he... name, like Seymour Drugan. Holy shit. It's a very strong yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. Um, he's the only family that I know of. <laughs> That's but, uh, um, music's deep rooted in the Drugan family, then. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it it goes back to my to my grandfather. I unfortunately never got to meet him. Um, he passed away fairly young, uh, back in nineteen sixty nine. Wow. Um, he was. 60 years old um so he 1909 uh, in, uh, holy shit yeah he was born in, he was born in 1909 <laughs> yep the things that guy um, must have seen yep yeah. he was born on my on my brother's birthday march 2nd they have the same birthday that's super cool that's super yeah. cool. I, I meant to ask you this earlier too did you did you have like confusions being friends with uncle brian and then your brother being brian just like name wise is it just like a pain in the ass no because like i don't call my brother brian very often it's weird because like you know we like we we work together um almost every day and we live pretty close and we get to spend a lot of time with each other which is great and um, i'm i'm saying if we're around each other and i'm talking to him i'm saying I'm saying bro or hey or bry um you know so if i'm like if i'm speaking about about brian i wouldn't i, I would be talking about 
your uncle. If I'm if I was speaking about my brother, I'd be I'd be telling somebody my brother. I wouldn't be saying Brian. Fair enough. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I would say I wouldn't say Brian's coming over. I'd say my brother's coming over. Fair. Enough. Did you make that, <laughs> that distinction at that time, or was it always that way with Brian? He's like, I'm my brother. I think it would be that way regardless if I was friends with yeah. him, with with other Brian's. Fair enough. So, yeah, I was curious about that. Um, I was also curious, was your dad sort of like your idol growing up and like idolizing him in the music scene and like what he had done? Mm, uh, is the, uh, the, the right word for it because he wasn't like, uh, I feel like that invokes, um, some sort of like person that you don't have like a real relationship with. Yeah. Um, I, I always looked up to him and I always wanted to like be like him and, you know, do things that he did and i wanted to like food that he liked so i'd pretend i liked it even if i didn't <laughs> um type of thing and you know but it wasn't like i idolized him idolize you know he wasn't like on a pedestal for me because he was obtainable to me you know he always had time for me and um you know was a great dad uh, is a great dad he seemed like it when i i mean Come on, you came out the way you came out. You must have been a great dad. Yeah, that's nice of you. <laughs> um, was he pushing you to get into music at all, or was that like a free? Not, a, not at all. Um, it was more he he had instruments and he had guitars and a bass and a uh you know awesome old tube amplifier you know at the house and we could just pick him up and play him and plug him in if we wanted to and we wanted to you know. At no point was he like, here, hold this and learn these chords or anything like that. It was me asking him, like, hey, can you show me, can you show me a rock and roll, you know, lick or, you know. So. Super cool. That's very yeah. cool. I mean, I'm sure he must be very proud, you guys, going into the music industry. Like, any any father would be, like, people following in their footsteps. Yeah, I, he he's the kind of dad that he would have been proud of us no matter what we did. Yeah. Uh, but he definitely has fun um, that, you know, being around all this and being able to, you know, talk about, you know, all the awesome experiences he's had and share with people and people love hearing it. It's the kind of place where people want to hear uh, those, you know, stories and those interactions and it's important to them and they like listen and like are all about it and he loves that, you know, people care and want to hear about it. And it's fun for everybody. It's great. And it's awesome having him around. He's uh he's a uh, awesome, powerful, positive energy. He's he seemed like it real hard when I put when I yeah. I only met him that one time, but that one time he seemed like a very, very powerful, like just solid dude. Yeah, man, you gotta uh you gotta come and visit and uh and stay over here. Oh, I'm absolutely. Yeah. I miss you, man. I miss being in Chicago. I, I you gotta take me back Come to that down. German that German restaurant we went to so I can get some Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, so is that place closed? Um no. like maybe a couple months after you guys were here. Um, oh no. I think, I think they had really, really uh slow business from COVID and it's a really big place mm, and they geez. couldn't keep it open. I don't know. That's well, just, I guess. I'm glad I got but that delicacy we, before. We have other great places, uh, other great German restaurants and amazing places like that that we can go to that you'll have just as good as good a time as. Is that like a very common thing in Chicago with that like big hall kind of like setting for German restaurants? Um, no, there's there's a few. Um, not uh. The, the Chicago Brow House is one of the coolest ones, and and uh, your dad has been there uh, with me before. We have great pictures from it. Um, but that place also closed down. Um, there's definitely places that are that are that have that food and that kind of decor and vibe to it, but not necessarily the huge, you know, vault, uh, um, you know, super high beer hall ceilings and stuff. Um, that to to have like a huge place like that in Chicago, um, you really have to have people in there like all the time for it to stay open. Um, 
which is, you know, it's there, but there, there are some places like that, that, that are big. I, I mean, I could, where was that place? Was that in Chicago? I didn't feel like we drove too far to there. It was in, uh, it was in Rosemont, which, Rosemont, is, okay. uh, which is where all the, all, not all, but a lot of the big trade shows in the, in Chicago yeah. happened. Yeah. I was say, oh, out of the car it's show. Chicago, but it's a couple miles from O'Hare airport where everybody flies in. Uh, yeah, I, I do have to get out there soon. This was actually a good good spot to kind of transition. I wanted to ask you, is your dad in like the shop all the time? Just like shooting game with the people coming in? Uh, well, yeah, he not not only that, but he he helps out around here. He does a lot of um, he does anything we need for him to help out. He helps us restore, you know, awesome old vintage and he um he helps uh, take stuff to the post office and UPS and, um, but yeah, you know anything anything we need we need to hand with. Um, that was one thing that I kind of overlooked when when we came and you showed me around was like, the conversations that must be had, you know, through shared experiences from musicians coming in and you guys and your dad and stuff like that. There must be like a lot of cool shared moments right there in that in that shop. Yeah, man, it's fun uh, for sure. There's it definitely is a um you know good breeding ground for uh for great stories and and uh, uh reminiscing you know yeah um it was like when you're for well first of all for people who don't know we're talking about Drugans antique drums and guitars yes, drums and guitars yeah. Over in you are in Des Plaines, Illinois, correct? Yep, Des Plaines, Illinois, indeed. And a uh, quick description for those who are listening and watching: uh, they sell antique drums and guitars, um, restored mainly, or are they? Is it kind of like up and down between like? So restored? basically, we we buy, we buy, sell, and trade cool vintage and boutique. Um, Guitars, basses, drums, cymbals, microphones, outboard gear, um, things like mainly relating towards, um, you know, the golden era of rock and roll. Um, but, you know, anything that's cool, um, we're into it um, when it comes to that type of stuff. We love cool old vintage musical memorabilia and advertising, um, vinyl records, um, you know, we are are not a uh, one trick pony. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, our shop we have a, a a great little brick and mortar shop, and then I also have uh, recording studios on premise. Um, and um, yeah, I, mean, I I didn't ask anything. you while you were there. How often do you like rent those out to other people? Um, it's not it's not rented out per. It's more um, uh, a band that we want to work with is wants to make a recording, um, and we we plan it out, and they come to the studio, and we record it here for them. Um, so it's it's usually I'm I'm usually producing, and uh, one of my uh, partners is uh, uh, engineering and co-producing with me, and we work with a band to make a great recording that they love. Super cool. So yep. I mean, we generally do like day rates when it comes to something like that. Yeah. You know, the the bed will, you know, plan. You know, on a, after after everything is set up in the studio, if the band knows their their stuff pretty good, um, and it's you know a regular three or four piece rock band, you know, your the goal is that you're you know doing a song a day, and then mixing a song or two per day. So if they're doing you know four songs, you'd think you know six to eight days um of of day rate you know in the studio yeah for those of you who don't know which i'm sure is going to be most people watching this studio is like the coolest place of all time hopefully uh, when i when i come out to this planes, we can do a podcast in like the little lounge area so we can give like the people yeah, watching man. a little visual it is like the coolest place to record fucking music yeah, I mean, like, we should do a song for you while you're out here, too. Oh, man, I would love to. Come on, that'd be awesome. It. 
Yeah, I say yeah. I got some uh, some more stuff to send you as well. Um, that me and me and my buddy have been working on. Uh, he's a producer. Awesome! I can't wait to check it out. Yeah, for sure. I, um, I really liked what I heard. Yeah, I mean, I was for you for you to say that you liked it, and for you to like keep kind of inquiring about it. Um, and your CD's in the mail, by the way. I mailed it out the other day, so it should be awesome, on its man. way. Um, but for for you to say that stuff and inquire about it meant the world to me. For someone who like has the music knowledge and you know ex- experience that you have, uh, just like to hear you talk about my music felt amazing. So I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man, I'm excited for you. Um, it felt uh, it felt really genuine and it it was unique and cool. I appreciate yeah. that. I think that's, I mean, yeah. I'm sure as an artist, you know, being someone saying that is unique is probably one of the best compliments you can get. Yeah, of course. I'm, uh, I'm excited to spend a little time with him when I, when I get it, uh, when it gets here. Hell yeah. Um, and then like last but not least, this was kind of like the biggest thing I always wanted to ask you was, um, where, where did your love for this vintage come to play? Cause it's not only your, your passion, in your business, but like, it's your passion, like in your house, like you walk through and like the whole house is vintage stuff everywhere. Yeah, man. Um, I, I don't, I, if I had to guess, if I had to psychologize myself, I, I think it was a combination of my dad had cool old instruments and like kind of taught me how and why to appreciate them and what made them cool. Um, and I I just remember like opening up his like his bass case or his guitar case when I was a kid and just like the smell that from the inside of the case like this cool great like smell of like wood and the you know whatever the in the interior of the case was made of and and everything about it was just awesome um and then that combined with my dad used to bring my brother and I to flea markets every Sunday. Oh. Um, and he would have like a whole bunch of stuff to sell and we would help him set up and sell. And then after a little while, you know, he'd give us a few bucks to go out, you know, treasure hunting. And uh, we'd walk around the flea market and see all these old antiques and all sorts of, of awesome old junk all over the place. And, you know, we would go and buy pocket knives and, baseball cards and oh, yeah. whatever other cool good thing, stuff you know that yeah you know stuff that i still love to this day well the the knives of course but maybe not yeah so much the baseball card i have a very cool <laughs> video of like your knife collection i remember being like very excellent yeah, man. while i while i got it here hold on i have a i have a knife right here that i got it's not very like super nice of a knife but it reminded me of you when i bought it at the th- at the thrift stop that i got it at right on man. Just the... i like it yeah i liked it too and i was like shit this is some shit that was like in johnny's case <laughs> but <laughs> much more inexpensive <laughs> but no yeah i i you, admired your vintage collection of everything you still have that uh pocket knife brian and i gave I you do. a long time ago? i do i no, have it in a I swear I have it in a box downstairs of like all my uh, awesome. keepsakes. Awesome. That would, that meant the world to me. It was my first knife. I never owned a knife. No one ever given me a knife. <laughs> and then I was like, this is yeah. awesome. It was cool because I, I actually re- got I, to, I think, uh, no, you go. I, I think I, I think I might've even made sure with your dad, if it was okay that we gave <laughs> it to you, but I didn't want to, I didn't need him getting mad at me. Cause you were, you were young when we gave it to you. Yeah. I was like 11, 10, 11. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I remember also <laughs> I had, I had uncle Brian's, uh, let my last little bit here. Uh, uncle Brian had an old bed frame and he carved in lyrics to like Nirvana on the bed frame, huh. the entire song. And then I got awesome. to carve in my own stuff with the knife that you gave me on the bed frame. So it was really cool. Wow. Looking back on that moment. Um, I love hearing. I, I love you, Johnny. I want you to know that you are the man, and I appreciate you very oh, much for man. doing this. I love you too, man. Like I would, I would always do this. This is great. You're the absolute man. Um, let's stay in contact. I want to like maybe do like a weekly call or something with you, dude. I'm into it. Always, yeah. always around. I always just felt like I needed to be more connected to you. You're just, you're the man, and I, I appreciate all the time that I get to spend with you. <laughs> 